1992, Nintendo released a quirky little racing game for the Super Famicom and Super Nintendo. They called it Super Mario Kart. The game began as a failed experiment, developed as a small side project within Nintendo's Entertainment Analysis and Development Group. But the young group of designers saw potential in the game and persevered. Over time, it evolved into an offbeat kart racer, featuring twisty racetracks, power-ups, and familiar characters from the Super Mario universe. Despite receiving little hype leading up to its release, Super Mario Kart was a surprise success. It became the best-selling Super Famicom game in Japan, and one of the best-selling games for the system worldwide. But more importantly, Super Mario Kart brought people together and set a new standard for multiplayer console games. It launched a franchise that still exists today and continues to be one of Nintendo's best-selling game series. This is the story of Super Mario Kart. In the fall of 1990, Nintendo entered the next generation with their newest console, the Super Famicom. But they were late to the party. NEC's PC Engine had been on the market since 1987. Sega had joined the competition with the Mega Drive in 1988. However, Nintendo was confident their latest console would dominate the market. Hardware-wise, it was much more powerful than its predecessor, the Famicom. But the true strength of the Super Famicom lay in the software. Nintendo knew that all the hardware power in the world meant nothing if the games weren't good. The Super Famicom launched with two games, and they struck a balance between showing off new technology and providing exciting gameplay. The first launch title was Super Mario World, a continuation of Nintendo's most popular franchise. Super Mario World was an evolution of the beloved series, with minor technical features to show off the new bells and whistles of the Super Famicom. Things like rotating platforms and transparency effects were cool, but didn't affect the gameplay that much. The second launch title, however, was an impressive technological feat, F-Zero. F-Zero was a fast-paced, futuristic racing game where players zipped through huge, sprawling maps with long, narrow tracks. It was unlike anything ever seen on a console, and it was all thanks to a new graphics technology in the Super Famicom called Mode 7. Mode 7 was able to scale and rotate a background, altering the perspective for a pseudo-3D effect. It was impressive. Critics were blown away by F-Zero. Famitsu Magazine gave the game 37 points out of 40, three points higher than Super Mario World. One reviewer stated, the sense of speed found here is unlike any other racing game we've seen so far. It feels like this game clearly shows off the allure of the Super Famicom. But there was one major problem with F-Zero. It was a single player game. That bothered Nintendo's chief software producer, Shigeru Miyamoto. Miyamoto was the man behind some of Nintendo's most popular game series, including Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. He was also heavily involved with developing the Super Famicom. He consulted on the system's design, the controllers, and even the packaging. Miyamoto insisted that the Super Famicom come with two controllers. He wanted to ensure developers would keep multiplayer in mind when they made games. But ironically, neither launch title utilized both controllers. F-Zero was single player only. And while Super Mario World was a two player game, players couldn't play simultaneously. Miyamoto felt that development teams had only scratched the surface of the potential of the Super Famicom. So he devised a new project. Make a game like F-Zero, but for two players. He assigned the task to two talented staff members within Nintendo's Entertainment Analysis and Development Group, Tadashi Sugiyama and Hideki Kono. Both men had experience working with Miyamoto. Sugiyama joined Nintendo in 1983 and came up through the creative department with them. Sugiyama initially designed characters such as Popo and Nana from Ice Climber 
and eventually became a game director. His first job was the highly anticipated second game in the Zelda series, Zelda II, The Adventure of Link. Sugiyama also had experience with the Mode 7 technology in the Super Famicom, having just wrapped up director duties on Pilot Wings, a flight simulation game. Working alongside Sugiyama was Hideki Kono. Kono joined Nintendo in 1986 and cut his teeth designing ice hockey, a fun arcade-like sports game for the Famicom Disk System. But his most significant work was creating the overworld maps and levels for both Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World. Miyamoto oversaw both projects. Kono recalled he learned a lot about game development and creation by working under Miyamoto. Now, in the fall of 1990, Miyamoto entrusted Sugiyama and Kono to direct a new racing game for two players. As for himself, Miyamoto would serve as a producer, a self-proclaimed, pretty relaxed role. He remembered, I don't know if I can really say I participated in this development. It was more like I observed it. Sugiyama and Kono also recruited additional staff, including programmers, to help with the project. Among them was Masato Kimura. Kimura had helped program F-Zero, so it made sense for him to help with a potential sequel. He was named the director of programming. They also brought in Hajime Yajima. Yajima had previously worked on pilot wings, implementing a digital signal processing chip, or DSP chip, on the cartridge. The chip helped the game program run extra calculations behind the scenes. Sugiyama and Kono knew their two-player racing game would need this chip to work. So Miyamoto walked over to Yajima's desk, tapped him on the shoulder, and said, let's work together. With a team in place, Sugiyama, Kono, and the rest of the staff got to work. But by most accounts, the work was somewhat informal. There was no master design document and Kono recalled not taking any notes during meetings. They were more like chat sessions. Everyone sat near each other in the office, so team members simply went up to each other's desks and talked. Many team members split their time with other, more extensive projects. Despite this, they were a dedicated group. Kono recalled that early development was mostly just sitting at one's own desk, grinding it out. Unfortunately, they quickly learned that making a two-player F-Zero game was next to impossible. F-Zero's racetracks were massive, with long straightaways that gave a sense of speed. The tracks were displayed over an area of 100 screens, but due to hardware limitations, it was way too complex to do this for two players simultaneously. So sacrifices had to be made. With two players, the racetrack would have to be downsized from 100 screens to only 16. With such a small race course, they couldn't add those long straightaways, only twists and turns. Kono finally admitted, with more than one player, 